Welcome to the show tonight. We have a great, great interview with uh, First Call. There are three members of a great band that's been broadcasting and going to different places. And you'll remember some of their songs and stuff as they talk and they share about it. We, we interviewed them at the NRB, and they're a last minute, last minute guest that we're able to get on there. And uh, it, it was good. It was good. You'll enjoy that interview. And then we're also going to be talking just a little bit about making, inspiring someone that your faith has to inspire someone. I think that's going to be a great topic. We're going to talk about it, give you a couple of scriptures, and just see how your faith gets inspired. And I'm not going to go into my lesson now. I'm ready to go on it, but I'm going to save that for the last segment today. So we'll be right back with First Call. Thank you for joining us on Midwatch. Welcome to the show. This is your host, David Yanis, and we are here at the NRB, as you can see. I actually got the set with the thing behind me so <laughs> hopefully we're we've been very blessed this week we've been getting the main set and you know that's his favor i love god's favor Amen. but we have a very very special three guests here with us and uh, this a first for us at the show and i think last year we had mosaic or mosaic i don't know how to say it right but they're like seven or eight people but we weren't doing we weren't doing uh, <laughs> we weren't doing the television so it wasn't too hard it was radio yeah. uh, but this year's an awesome way. first call yes and i'd like nice to, to welcome each of y'all marty thank you dave Bonnie. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to kill the last one, Melody. No. Yes. I'm sorry. You got it. I'm sorry. You got but it. praise God, we're here. And first of all, tell us how First Call started. Well, we started as a studio group. We started uh, singing in Nashville, Tennessee. We were um, all individually uh, recording on jingles and commercials and background vocals and things like that. And we got hired by a producer. Uh, as the soprano, the the alto, and the tenor, okay, <laughs> and um, and immediately when we began to sing together, there was just a great blend and a, a great sound that happened. Mm. And so, really, from that that time, we ended up deciding, you know, let's offer ourselves as a group to producers. Okay, and so we called ourselves First Call, which is kind of a presumptuous yeah. name because the first call. Uh, instrumentalists or singers are the ones that are the best. Okay. And so we named ourselves that. Uh, they're the first called, which makes sense. Hey, you're speaking by faith. Yeah, by faith, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But, I, I think that was good. Yeah. You're speaking it out. That's right. But the underlying thing was that um, our first calling is Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we could be doing, you know, all kinds of music and that, that sort of set the tone for who we were. Now, how did um, providing backup and all that, how did that help y'all when it was your turn to go out there and start doing your own ministry? And, and singing. Well, we, we had all been uh, on the road with different groups. Marty okay. had his, a group called Fireworks that was really one of the, the premier rock bands in Christian music. And he had kind of gotten off the road with that. Mel was on the road with Truth. Truth. And I was out with Russ Tapp. And, and we'd all been on the road and decided not to go on the road anymore. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so being on a platform wasn't unusual for any of us, but doing it together was uh, something God put together. And how did y'all know each other? We didn't. Just, we didn't in the beginning. Okay. We were we were that just sort of put together in that group. But then we, we ended up singing background vocals on a lot of Christian artists' okay. uh, albums. I was going to say CDs, but back then it wasn't. It was albums. And, uh, and God opened doors for us then to do our own project, which we really honestly fought. Because we, like Bonnie said, we had all been on the road and wanted to just be um, at home and recording. But the Lord just had much bigger plans for us and, and we ended up going on the road with Sandy Patty was our first time oh, yeah. to be on the road and we backed her up and then had a little spot and did our first album with that. So over a 15 year span, several Dove Awards, several Grammy nominations, mm -hmm. was, how does that, I mean you just, how do you feel? I mean I've never won Grateful. a Dove Award, just won a, won a, it was wonderful but we didn't have a lot of time to sort of sit back and think about it because okay. we would be on the road for two weeks. Best. And then we would be scheduling ourselves in the studio to do studio work 
the, for the two weeks we were home, okay. we would go back on the road again. So, so it was a we fast paced very, very life busy. there. Just, mm-hmm. Yeah, it, we, we were blessed with work and what, we and, were really grateful for it. And what inspires you to write the songs? Our well, faith. yeah. Faith. Our own relationship with the Lord. And, and we, we wrote a lot of the songs and then we, we were blessed to get great songs from from other writers that you know that it really stood the test of time we recorded a lot of these however many years ago in the 20s -hmm. of years ago and now we're coming back to sing together again and bringing those songs back and and wanting to introduce them to a a new audience Um, and and at the same time there are a lot of people that have been you know followers of first call that have enjoyed our music in the past and and just uh, so many people that that these songs were a big uh, part of their own journey. Okay. And uh, so it's fun to. So that's that's kind of neat. And so right now you're part of the Lord of All Tour. Yes. And how did that come about? Well, um, you were probably one of the main connections there, yeah. but um, but a, a promoter um, who has legacy uh, artists. He's okay. a, a tour promoter, and um, he really f- believes that a lot of that music that now is vintage Christian music classic classic, classic. classic. That's right. it's classic. Okay. needs yeah. to be back out there okay because you know one of the things that we say you know is that we've lived a lot of life together as friends mm-hmm. you yeah. know we're all married we all have grown kids now but we've we've watched God be faithful through so much mm-hmm. Amen. you know high moments really low moments and we've all three been through them so we feel like now, and Mel says often that the songs now have new meaning for us too. Amen. Because of the, the depth oh, yeah. of our relationship to the Lord Amen. over the years, and we also feel like we have something to share. We can say we've watched each other grow in the Lord. We've watched our kids mm-hmm. grow in the Lord. We've watched our marriages grow, mm-hmm. and you know that's not something everybody can say and we feel like that it's important you know what oh, go ahead i'm sorry no please go ahead. no i'm just thinking uh, to follow up with what marty said too the legacy tours um, are bringing together artists like russ Taff. we'll be out with russ Taff and clay cross and wayne watson and we've sung on their projects and have known them for a long time okay. for us to go out and do this music together it's he has several different tours but, but um lord of all was one of the big songs for us uh, so to be out on the Lord of All tour is a really sweet thing for us mm-hmm. to, to be able to go out and do It's a real that. honor. Yes, that, it is. That's amazing. And what I was going to say was uh, when, I, when I write my sermons, even like maybe 20, maybe oh, 15 years ago, I had a small church and I had a lot of sermons that really taught me how to write sermons. Yes. And like there was a need I had to keep yes. writing every week. And I, I would not trade that. But I can remember my mood, my thoughts when I was writing that, that sermon back then. Now, is that the same for, yes. for music? Mm-hmm. I mean, do, you, do you remember yes. back Absolutely. when you were writing it, why you wrote it, what inspired oh, definitely. you? definitely. And yeah. doesn't, don't you like look back and, for me, I mean, I'm not saying I'm some great scholar, which I'm not, but I look at it and say, man, I was anointed that day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does that yeah. happen for y'all? God gave you a great oh, gift. Yeah. 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 Well, and the word says, from out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. Amen. And we've found as songwriters, and all three of us are, that out of the abundance of what God is teaching us, ends up coming out in songs. Oh, amen. So, besides the tour, uh, what currently are you involved in? Well, um, we're actually, we've actually been in the studio and done yeah. some things recently. Um, we don't know where God is going to take okay. this, this most recent effort, but all of us also have individual careers That's and nice. ministries. Mm-hmm. And so, everything to us is ministry you yeah know? that's and, true same and here the only reason that we would even do this again is because we feel like god has opened the door amen you know, we didn't force any doors open for this but we we want to be sensitive to the holy spirit and walk through when god opens the door so i'm currently a, a worship pastor and um the creative arts pastor actually and a worship leader at a church in the dc area keeps me very busy i bet but you know we carve out the time when when the lord opens and the that's door. important that's important right now i have maybe five ministers that i can call 
and say, hey, I have a mission trip in, in September. Mm -hmm. um, can I put you on? Pray about it. And they'll call me back, yeah, put me on. But my goal is to get 20 ministers that I can say, hey, I have something open in China. I need someone to go with me. Would you go and mm -hmm. you know help do this, do okay. the pastor's conference, why do the healing that service? And so, so similar to what y'all are doing, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you, you're doing your, your regular daily things, right. and then you just come together to do what God's exactly. called y'all together. It and I think that's similar. needed now. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. tries to be their own thing. And everybody tries to you know make this one thing and be, I really believe it's a a corporate thing this next mm -hmm. move from God is a yes. corporate movement yeah. we feel like God has definitely at this time mm -hmm. brought us back together for certain specific so, reasons yeah. and Bonnie yeah. and Mel are, e are equally as busy as yes. I am and we're all everybody. so what are, you, yeah. what are you doing right now um, I do a lot of solo work. I, okay. I've written several books and I have several projects. I go out and speak at women's conferences. Oh, that's good. Events, that's pretty then, active right there. And I have a two-woman woman musical that I've written with a good friend. It's 21 Women from the Bible that we go out and do. It. It's got a Bible study. And then every day is different. It is. Studio work. And I mean, it's all different. <laughs> so that's, but this that's is, nice. This that's with, nice. with Marty and Mel has is, is, is always been a tremendous gift Amen. and blessing. And something happens with it. Amen. When we go out together. And, so, and Melody? And Mel. What are you doing? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I'm also a worship leader at a okay. church, and then um, my husband and I go out and do, uh, we, we do worship conferences and things like that, okay. speak and marriage events and speak and, and sing and do things like that. So. so I'm not the only one that's crazy. See, <laughs> yeah. I, I've got Red Media Publishing, Red Media Broadcasting. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. David has ministries, do missions, and people's like, how can you do all that? I go, how can't you? Yeah. Well, well, I, I mean, think you're exactly right, too, when yeah. you say that, we, you know, the where God's taking us is just to be open yep. right. to be able to hear him. He might not always be saying first call reunion to her, right. yeah. but right. we want to follow whatever it is that he's saying to yeah. do. And I think d diversity yeah. is always the way God works. Absolutely. Amen. Now the big question, is there an album coming? We are, really? <laughs> we, we are kind of, I mean, we're we formulating. Okay. Uh, we've actually recorded a couple of songs uh, just for ourselves, just to to see where God is taking it. Okay. Um, but uh, and this is very, our most yeah, this recent. is our okay. most recent Most people one, don't even know about this project that we took. I got my copies. This mine. Yes. Ha -ha, this Acapella is mine. Acapella hymns. <laughs> this um, is nice. First call, rejoice. Get another shot of that, real quick. Yes. And we'll get we'll get the it's image. It's our first up. ever hymns a project. It, it's oh, wow. acapella In all the hymns. Thirteen well, CDs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh man. Well, for those struggling artists out there, or those that just want to find out where their call is and and their and, and their musicians or whatever they're in entertainment, what would what would you tell them? What would what would just real quickly? We've got about a minute left. What would you tell them? Either one of y'all, or both of y'all, or three of you. Seek the Lord with all your heart. And Amen. I, I just so believe that God will open the, do the doors. We don't have to. I mean, he isn't a God of confusion. And, yes, we have to pursue things, but he will make it clear Amen. if they are seeking him. Amen. 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 I agree. Thank you so much for being Thank on the show. Thank you for having us. And God bless I appreciate you all. being yes. patient and letting me Thank take care you. of everything and get Thank this you. thing going. Oh, yeah. And I hope you have a blessed day. And, Thank you and very much. Love yeah. to, would love to stay in contact with you. Yes. God bless you. Okay. And we'll be right back with another great guest. God bless you. Welcome back to the show, and we're excited just to see uh, just to see us here at the station again. I'm so proud of my boys. They're here helping us do the control room, and they're learning, and we're just getting things running and seeing how God is doing things, and it's amazing. That interview with First Call was, like I said, on the earlier part of the segment there, that the opening segment. It's, that, that was the last minute thing we put together, and I had to figure out how to shoot three people because I've been shooting uh, two, one person most of the time of the whole interview, so... I had to go borrow some chairs from the sets next door and, and just, just grab it and put it to go together. And I tell you, I enjoy the NRB, and, and it's a great experience, but I wish I had my own room because it'll be easier. And, and I, I want to tell you what, I thank God. I really do. I thank God for just making us in demand. And we're in demand on, on the video and interviewing and stuff like that. And, and it's a great thing. Today, I just on the radio show, we interviewed John Ware, and uh, he, he is a... Um, he is president and founder of the 168 Film Project, and, and we're excited that, that we're able to interview him. He's going to be on our, our TV show probably in a few more months, uh, right before their big release in Glendale of the festival, um, of the videos, the great, uh, I believe it's called the screenings and stuff, and the premiere, oh, premiere, that's the word I'm looking for. Anyway, he, he'll be with us on TV before that. I'll make sure I get that. But uh, it's great to be having different people call us and get us interviewed. In fact, I'm already booked up for the, inter for the ICRS, which comes out uh, this next end of June. We're going to be on that. And we're, we're just pretty busy doing interviews and visiting. You never know what God's going to do, but I'm going to tell you, we're going to go to some videos in a minute, but 
When we get back, I'm going to talk to you about letting your faith inspire others. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes because you never know what you're doing and how it's going to inspire people. We'll be back. We have an interview. We have a video that we're going to come back with with a family mission statement. And it's David Stone put these together. You'll enjoy them. We put up a poster on the window, and at first my children were just going to attack it with a bunch of goofy phrases, and I said, I want you to think through things that we really want to do as a family, who we really want to be to the people around us. I love the challenge of a family mission statement because um, what we do in life, we usually we have goals and we have it clearly lined out, and then you can achieve those when you see them kind of in writing. And so when I read that in the book, I thought, why not? For our family, it's the most important goal that we have. Let's put it down. We came up with the mission statement that we love others completely because God loves us completely. And the way that we're going to do that is we are going to speak it, we are going to act it, and we are going to pray it. And uh, I think that gives my kids a real... Um, a real solid ground to stand on when they don't know what to do or when they don't know how to treat other people. I hope they'll go back. And that poster still hangs there. It's on the window, and I'm going to let it stay because I love that it's all in their handwriting and that they said this is what we want to be about. And our goal is not just for them to be happy and healthy and live the American dream, but their goal is to live for God, to walk with Jesus every day a little bit closer. The thing I like about our, our mission mission statement is it helps keep us focused. I feel like we have always been purposeful parents. Um, just since day one, since birth, we have talked about how we want to raise our family. That thought of coming up with a family mission statement, just you know, just being very intentional about our day-to-day -day life and how that aligns with parenting. So we actually sat down and probably took about three weeks to come up with something concise that matches who we are as parents, but also the gifts of our children. So our family mission statement, which is posted enormously on our wall, says, uh, love God, love others, love life. Pain in the neck? It's ginger to the rescue. The same herb that puts a zing in your tea and the snap in your ginger snaps can actually zap your painful muscle aches, too. I'm Dr. Katherine Albrecht, and I'll be back in a moment to tell you more. Your search engine is watching you, recording all your searches and creating a massive database of your personal information. That's creepy, but it doesn't have to be that way. Startpage.com is the world's most private search engine. Startpage doesn't store your IP address, make a record of your searches, or use tracking cookies, and they're third-party certified. If you don't like Big Brother spying on you, start over with Startpage. Great search results and total privacy. Startpage.com, the world's most private search engine. Got a nagging ache that just won't go away? You might want to head for the produce aisle. Ginger, the herb used in gingerbread cookies and Indian curry, can also put an end to pain. Medical studies show ginger relieves pain and inflammation like aspirin and ibuprofen do, but without the worrisome side effects. Big pharma remedies can trigger stomach upset, gastrointestinal bleeding, and ulcers. Ginger? Well, it just tastes great. Researchers say one or two teaspoons of ginger daily, raw or heated, can provide natural relief for even the deep pain of osteoarthritis. So put down the aspirin bottle and reach for the ginger. It's natural, it's delicious, and it works wonders. I'm Dr. Katherine Albrecht for StartPage.com, the world's most private search engine. Hi, this is David Yannis with David Yannis Ministries and Midwatch with the Rip. Just want to talk to you for a few minutes of a very special group of kids that I ran into just a few years ago. Imagine a place where you can't serve the Lord Jesus Christ and where you will be persecuted and where your house will be burnt, your church will be burnt, your families will be beaten and cursed, and where you, they, where you will go through life with no education because you serve the Lord. Now imagine being four, five, six, seven years old and not having an opportunity to, to do anything in school or work because you haven't had the education that you needed because you are not renounced the name of Jesus Christ. Well, I have a very special group of kids that aren't imagining this but are living this today. I want to introduce to you the kids of DTC 
and Agape Bible College orphanages that we put together. You're going to enjoy them. God bless you. These special children just love the Lord with all their heart and want to see God move and would not renounce the name of Jesus. After houses being burnt, every day some of these children walk past graves of men of God that died because they would not renounce the name of Jesus. Some of them even live in tents. After the proper magistrates allowed us to take these children and with one gift from one family that moved the entire orphanages to both places, we were able to have our orphanages open. Throughout the year and out throughout the day, there's food prepared for each of these wonderful kids. Feeding 100 kids isn't easy, but our teams do it gladly. Medical attention is given to every child. Each of them require immunizations because they come from rural areas. Overnight hospital stays are always accompanied by one of our adult staff members. Education is important and most of these kids, if not all of them, graduate their grade level with honors. Along with chores that they do around the house, they enjoy worshiping the Lord, reading their Bible, and sharing in birthdays, celebrations, and holidays such as Christmas. Our future goal is to finish out four acres of land we placed the first building there along with the well that was donated. We're excited to see what God does in the future. Please help us. Help us put this together and bless them. Aren't those some amazing kids? I tell you what, I enjoy being a part of their life. I enjoy what I do in raising funds to help support them. But most of all, I enjoy them when I'm out there in India. They, they have their hands lifted and they're excited about the Lord. And I'm excited to be a part of their life and seeing that because of the sacrifice I'm making and the commitment I'm making to them, that they're able to serve the Lord. They're able to have a place to to stay and they have been able to have a home that loves them they're also able to get medical school and food it's, it's just an amazing amazing thing and we want to keep this continuing we want to add more kids around us and we want to start this around the world as well so we have revlife.net if you go on that you can donate that's www.revlife.net or you can always write us and send us a send us a donation through the mail at revlife P.O. Box 5172, Kingwood, Texas, 77325. Thank you so much. God bless you, and we appreciate your support. Welcome back to the show, and we're excited that, that we're able to talk to you about something that I think is very important. I want you to just think about this for a little bit. Uh, faith inspires. Faith inspires. And you have to have faith to get things. Don't you agree? I mean, when, when, you ha when you pray for things, it requires faith. Jesus could do no miracles unless there be faith, the Word of God says. Now, your faith inspires people. The way you work, the way you walk and talk to people and get them excited about God's work, that inspires people as well. So I was had on the radio show today, had some good guests, uh, but one thing that I was talking to what I was mentioning before I started the radio show, and, and that was that when we do things like the healing ministry or when you need something in your life, you need to inspire stuff. You know, I grew up uh, going to these, these uh, and you probably see them a lot, the, what do they call them, the motivational speakers. Uh, I, I used to go to a couple of them here and there, and they all sound the same. I am so glad that God did not give me the money to buy into a home, home real estate 
uh, motivational speaker. He was like, if you have the money, get it right now. They speak so well, they inspire you. They make you want to just jump in, write a check, give me the package, I want the works, be my, my development mentor or whatever. They, 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 they're really good at what they do, they are, and, and they do that a lot. I went to a mortgage one one time, and the guy, he, this is the examples he gave. He said, I want you to, to go back to your home, and I want you to go in front of your mirror, and I want you to take off your clothes and look at yourself naked. And when you look at yourself naked, is there some things you want to change? Are you happy with how you look? If not, you need to change doing this and this and this. And he gave you motivational speaking how to change your workout habit, how to change your eating habit. And that, that was all neat. It inspired people. People went to the back and they bought his, his program, which I think was motivational speakers that, that mentor you and get you to where you need to do in yourselves. And I've known enough about the Word of God that all I need for inspiration is the Word of God and faith happens. So if it happens in the natural realm, and it happens when people are just saying things and doing things, then it's going to happen in the spiritual realm. Jesus even knew that. You know, the Word of God says, and I believe it's in Luke 8, 40, if we can pull that scripture up. Um, he, he was received gladly. He was received um, by the people gladly. The Word says, and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Luke 8, 40. Now, let me tell you this. When you inspire people, people receive you. They're excited to have you. They're excited to see you a part of their life. They look at you walking down the street. Jesus had that personality. He had that excitement. He had that, that charisma. If people were waiting to see him. Your life has to be the same thing. When you walk in faith, when you do the work of God, you have to inspire people. When I go to India, oh, we have just roves and roves of people just waving and wanting to get touched by the by prayer because I do a good job of inspiring people to get their healing and so you're whatever you do whatever you work in life and you have to be inspired you have to encourage yourself you have to make yourself available but do you know that miracles happen even when they're not supposed to happen let me explain that let's put the next scripture um, it should be Luke 8 4 59 8 59 or 49 something like that let me see what it says here and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all the people denied it, Peter said, and Peter said that they were with him, said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? Now, look at this for a second. They, they were walking around him. They were, they were all pressing against him, but somebody got a miracle. When your faith is inspired, you can make something happen that wasn't supposed to. Jesus looked at that lady and told her really quickly, you know, it's not your time. It's not supposed to happen. But you know what? Your faith has made you hold. You, you pulled a miracle from the Lord. You brought it in because you were inspired. She was inspired by the crowds, inspired by the stories. Your faith will do the same thing in your life. It'll inspire others. When you completely put your trust in God and believe in Him and believe in the Word, it will inspire you. It will make things happen. If you won't need anything in your life, well, faith needs to be inspired. I encourage you to continue to watch our shows. We're going to have some great people coming up in the next few weeks, and uh, we're going to have um, I believe John McTurnan in on Thursday night. We'll see you next time on the Midwatch. God bless you. Thank you for listening.